Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about uh, convergent modeling again and some of the differences between facet body and a convergent sheet body. A friend of mine, Todd, on a previous video made note that certain functions allow you to parametrically uh, cre uh, create trims and splits to a convergent body. Uh, in my video that I initially showed, I was showing um, uh, the SNP function inside of reverse engineering. And when you use the SNP function here, you don't get a, a parametric SNP to the actual conversion body. What it does is it physically, truly creates a division between the bodies. It's almost like a, almost like a split body. Um, if I use a trim sheet or a trim body or something along those lines, then I do get uh, something with parameters, then I do get history for my trim. So Todd's very smartly pointed out that um, if I use these features, that this is what it will do. Now, the reason why I used the SNP in the previous feature or the video is to, to make note that um, you do have to be careful uh, of what operator that you're using. So if you're using this SNP feature here, you will not get a historically based SNP or a trim body. So if I go into SNP here and I'll pick a facet body and my convergent body, you can see convergent and facet. I'm going to define this plane. This is an offset off of my ZX and I'm just going to simply select OK. So what's going to happen is it's going to split it. And I'm going to get several bodies. Yes, I want to proceed. So these are my facets and you can see that there's my original there's these additional facets and as well as my convergent bodies. Okay, so if I go through, we'll use this guy for instance. The original, as you can see, is overbuilt. You can see the, the line running through it. Now, if I make a modification to this plane, if I take this and I go out, say, 50 mils to 500, you'll notice that this body did not change. Okay, so I'll zoom up on it again, and I'll put this back at 450. You can see that there's no change to the body, because with that SNP feature, I'm creating uh, an actual division on the STL. It's physically splitting those STLs. I have it set up to divide, and this is a non-parametric uh, uh, modification that you're making to the STL. So I'm going to go ahead and undo this. Go back to my original two bodies, my facet and my convergent. Now this time I'm going to go into surface and I can use trim body or trim sheet here. So if I come in here and say uh, trim body for instance, if I try to pick the facet body, you'll see that it does not allow that. If I pick the convergent body, you'll see it does allow that. What plane am I going to split it to? I'm going to pick this plane. What side am I going to get rid of? I'll reverse it. I'm going to get rid of all this and select OK. Now, let me go ahead and hide my facet body. Now that I've done that, I'm going to make a modification to my plane. I'm going to go down to 300, for instance. As I do that, you'll notice the plane moves as well as my trimmed body. The same thing is true for a trim sheet. I could also throw a curve up there and split the STL with a curve. You have to be careful if the STL has uh, bad triangles or uh, non-manifold edges or something that internally is, you know, sometimes triangles like to uh, crease up on one another that the ability to split with that curve may be hampered a bit. You probably get some error messages because it doesn't know how to split uh, something that sort of folds back on itself. It has a hard time with that. Now, with this, you can see that I do have a body that is parametrically driven. Okay, so if I come back here and I make a modification of this, you'll see that that goes back to its original position. So depending upon what you are looking for and what you need, as, as again, my friend Todd smartly pointed out that you can use the trim body, you can use trim sheet, you can in fact use booleans as well with these convergent bodies. The facet bodies you, can, you cannot. Um, you have to use that SNP feature within the reverse engineering toolbar. So you want to make sure that you're using the correct tool. Now, where would I use SNP over trim? A lot of times what I'll do is now I'll SNP out the regions that I want it to, let's say, recreate completely. Let's say the glass or the fender or the door. I'll SNP those regions out, and then 
I may, if I want to do a trim line on a door, I'll project a curve onto a convergent model. And maybe that curve is going to move or update a little bit. The benefit of doing that is, is because the STL has been snipped, it's a much smaller STL for that region that I need. It uh, makes the processing much quicker. It allows me to do, maybe I need to offset a certain portion of that STL. I don't want to offset the entire um, STL, again, because it's going to really slow things down. So that's where SNP is going to be handy. But again, I'll use that SNP and over SNP, create a very large division. Again, simplifying, but coming back to my trim body or trim sheet, throwing curves up, and then using those functions to go ahead and um, uh, clean up what it is I need to clean up. So there's definite workflow there. I'll be posting more of these videos about workflow with convergent modeling using some of the tools there versus some of the tools um, within the reverse engineering toolbar versus some of the tools within the surface toolbar or uh, the uh, standard like Boolean functions and such. Thanks.